What is going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about some of the rarest Miatas that you most likely cannot even buy. I got inspired to make this video recently when I was browsing Facebook Marketplace and in the rare Miata parts group, a interesting gauge cluster came up for sale and this was an M2 1001 gauge cluster. So the cluster that would have come in that car stuck and the seller was asking $2,500 for it. Now there's a good reason for that and we're gonna get into this in just a second. But first, let's talk about M2 and what M2 actually is. Before doing my research for this video, I actually did not know a whole lot about these cars or M2 at all. So what M2 is, it was a division of Mazda that existed from 1991 to 1995. And basically what they did was modify production Mazda vehicles. And looking at what they did, this is actually very cool. I cannot believe that a uh, OEM manufacturer would do this kind of stuff. They're basically modifying these cars kind of like we would and then actually producing them to sell to the general public. So the first car they did was this M2 1001. They took a standard Miata and did some pretty extensive changes to it. The 1.6 engine was tuned with more aggressive pistons, camshafts, it got a lightweight flywheel and an LSD. The body of the car got an aggressive front bumper with fog lights. It's rocking 15 inch Panasport wheels. It has the retro looking mirrors that people love to do on Miatas. It even has a four point roll bar. Quite a bit of changes in the interior as well. It has a special Momo steering wheel that was made just for this car. The gauge cluster is different from the standard Miata. This is what I was talking about earlier. There is no center console manual steering, manual windows, AC was optional. It even has fixed back bucket seats, a polished aluminum strut brace under the hood, and the polished OEM valve cover. These are also a very rare part that you may see pop up from time to time. And it even had an HKS exhaust. So as you can see, quite a bit of modifications done to this. They produce 300 units, and apparently buyers had to show up to the M2 headquarters in Tokyo to register for a chance to purchase one. So I think this is really cool, an extremely rare car, an extremely cool part of the Miata's history. So in M2's short history, they produced a number of vehicles, not just the Miata. They included other cars in the Mazda lineup. As far as the Miatas go, I don't think any were quite as successful as this first one, the M2 1001. They made a 1002, which was pretty similar to this. It just had a more luxurious interior. And apparently this did not do as well and they had some leftover interior parts that they ended up using on the tokyo limited version miatas but one more car from them i want to touch on before we move on is going to be the 1006. now this is pretty crazy i cannot believe that an oem did something like this but they took a standard miata and they put the mazda 929 24 valve v6 engine into it and to do this, they got rid of the stock subframe and ended up using an RX-7 subframe in the rear. It had aggressively flared rear quarter panels with 245 tires underneath the rear. And due to the extent of modifications on this, they did not end up running these for production. But I think it's very wild that they even did this at all. What an amazing time it must have been to be able to perform these types of modifications to these cars with the backing of an OEM behind you with all the R&D that can go into it and all those re all those resources. So I definitely found this very interesting. So next thing I wanna talk about is the NA and NB Coupe. This is something that I wish existed in more than just the limited numbers that there are. The NA Coupe, there is only one that exists. It was made for the 1996 New York Auto Show. Tom Matano, the designer of the Miata, had had this vision of bringing a coupe into the Miata lineup, not just having it as a convertible roadster. And it never fully came to fruition, but they ended up using the NA coupe for this New York auto show in 96. So some of the R&D that they had put into this so far, they ended up making a fiberglass roof casting and grafting that onto a standard Miata body. And as a body guy myself, I'm very interested of how they would have constructed this thing. I don't know all the details, but if you look at the pictures, you can see that the fenders, rocker panels, and quarter panels, and then obviously going into the roof, is all one piece. There's no break at the rocker and fender like there would normally be. So all of these coupe parts, from what I'm reading, were made out of fiberglass, and this did add to the weight of the car, so it was heavier than a standard Miata but I think it's a very cool look. This is something that I wish there was more of. 
especially if they had the chance to do a full production run of these and do the necessary R&D to make it a true coupe. So they'd be using a steel roof. And from what I'm reading, the, the package tray that's behind the seats of the Miata that's pretty necessary for strength in the convertible, that would not have been necessary. They could have cut that out and basically had this nice kind of storage space going into the trunk, something kind of like you'd find in a Corvette. And then obviously they'd be able to use a steel roof and just the, the structural rigidity that that would provide, I think would be awesome to have in the Miata. But it wasn't meant to be, so we just got this one concept car, this one NA Coupe, that's currently a part of Mazda's Heritage Collection. You might have seen pictures before on the internet of this parking garage that's underneath Mazda's headquarters in Irvine, California. This is where they house all sorts of important cars to Mazda's history over the years, race cars, special editions like this. There's another very cool thing about Mazda, in my opinion, that all these cars actually run. They get maintained, they get taken out. They bring these cars out to events, to races, and things like that. But before we move on from this coupe idea, Mazda did end up producing 179 of the NB coupes, and these were only for the Japanese market. So extremely rare, extremely good looking in my opinion. And up until now, this would be the last time a true Miata Coupe was made. So next we have to talk about the 1989 Club Racer. You've probably seen pictures of this before. I know I had, but I never knew the history behind it. And I actually found it very interesting. So it debuted alongside the original NA Miata when it was first unveiled at the 1989 Chicago Auto Show. And this was a heavily modified version of the stock NA Miata. And it is a pretty wild idea to just be releasing this brand new idea of this Miata, this brand new car, and then right alongside it, you have this heavily modified version. So there's lots of little interesting details on this car as it is a pre-production Miata, one that was used for testing and R&D and things like that. So it's gone through all sorts of changes in its life just from Mazda testing things out before actually releasing the car. You'll notice on the interior some big differences. The door panels are a lot different. The location of the interior handle and just the design of the door panel itself. Everything is just a little bit cruder. It looks like they were testing things. You'll notice the cutout for the HVAC in the tombstone. It has square edges as opposed to round. The speed knob on the fan just has little dots instead of being numbered one, two, three. There's some slight differences in the gauge cluster. The design of the cowl is slightly different. There's some bits underneath the hood that are slightly different and look like they've been stolen from other Mazda vehicles. And once you start really looking, it's very clear that this, this car has been used for lots of different purposes before. The engine bay is red. There's some blue paint chips on the lower rocker panels. And it turns out the car was actually originally painted Mariner blue. And then the whole outside was repainted in this yellow for the show. It's got a front bumper that looks very similar to a Racing Beat Type 2 bumper. It's got wide rear quarter panels. Some interesting looking non-pop-up headlights, which from my reading are not functional. They are just for show. And it has one aero mirror on the driver's side door only. So these details were pretty interesting to me. There's another one of those cars that's tucked away in Mazda's basement. So moving on, we've got to talk about the six color cars. These were cars that were used to test various colors that actually never really made it into production. So what they did was they took six Miatas off the assembly line before anything got painted. And these cars got painted completely, one in each of these test colors. So they were painted completely underneath the hood, underneath the body panels, underneath the carpet, everything like it would be done like normal from the factory. They were not painted any other color first. So these six test colors were raspberry metallic, medium blue, a yellow metallic, a teal green metallic, a light green metallic, and orange, also known as Sunkist. This particular car had a very interesting and hard life. But basically, once Mazda was done doing whatever they needed to do, whatever testing with these cars, they were actually offered up for sale to Mazda employees first. And the location of most of these cars is now unknown, but there is quite a bit of backstory on the orange one, Sunkist. Pretty soon after the original owner, it was sold to someone else who ended up getting in a bad accident on the LA freeway. The car was deemed a total. It ended up going to a, another shop where it eventually got fixed. I'm not sure exactly what, was hap what happened to it, but it sounds like they put a front clip onto it. 
and then it made its way to Texas where it's still a little unclear but it's talked about that it got completely restored. I'm not sure if it was fully resprayed or not. There's another video on YouTube that talks about some of this in brief detail and the car looks complete and undamaged and the latest information I could find was that it was residing somewhere in California as of 2012. So being that there are only one of each of these Miatas out there, I'd be very interested to see where they all ended up. I could only imagine what a non-wrecked, non-repainted one of these would go for today. The last car we're going to cover today real quick is going to be the NC Superlight. This is a concept car that was made to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Miata. This is a very stripped down NC that only weighed 2100 pounds. It had no A-pillar, no windshield, carbon fiber hood, carbon fiber dash, no carpets, really no creature comforts at all, no AC or anything like that. This is a full-on concept show car just to see what they could do. Definitely very interesting looking. There's probably a few other Miatas I could have covered in this video, but these were the ones that were most interesting to me. I would like to throw an honorable mention to the 1998 NB. This is a very weird car. As you know, there is no 1998 Miata. Last year of the NA was 97. First year of the NB was 99. But they did make this one sort of test car. It's a weird mashup of the NA and the NB. The headlights and taillights look like this sort of weird combination of the NA and the NB. And apparently the driver's door has a nice curved bottom edge like the NB, but the passenger door has the square edge like the NA. Very weird car. It looks like they were just kind of testing things out. I'll drop a couple pictures and let you guys do more research on that for yourselves. But for now, that's going to do it for me on this one. I hope you found this as interesting as I did. I've always been a big fan of Mazda and learning about some of the crazy things they've done just makes it that much more cool. But for now, I'm going to go let me know what you found the most interesting about these cars in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome week and we'll see you in the next one.